Jimmy. Have I got a one there? Okay, okay. Thanks, a real life guy. Thank you, Zoe Lam. Facts. Look, I don't know what I'm going to talk about. Um, there's so many interesting topics in the world today. So many very, very interesting topics that we could talk about. You know, um, I'm nothing uh, spectacular. I'm nothing, you know, extraordinary. I'm just a, an average guy. I tune myself into what might matter, you know, what might be important. And I don't mind speaking about it uh, if I have an audience. I mean, one of, the, one of the first things I learned is that when people listen, so will the river flow, you know? It's like, uh, if, if, the, if the eternal life within me can flow out into receptivity, so the river will flow. Uh, I don't know anything more than you do. In actual fact, we all know everything. That's what they say. But we have certain shutdowns that limit us to our acknowledgement of our all-knowingness. So I would just like to encourage people to find their all-knowingness. You know, <laughs> uh, I'd like to encourage people to find out what they already know. I mean, we do know things. We record things. All things are known in the one mind that works. Uh, the one mind that works is the perpetual motion life of love and peace and joy and certainty. Uh, things that obstruct are another matter. And so learning about things that actually obstruct uh, would be important, you know, like what has hindered us, what has encumbered us, what has shut us down, what has made us dumb, what has made us ignorant of reality, you know. And so I like to encourage everyone to find their true power within themselves, that they can speak to themselves or they can answer a question or if those around them have something to ask, they can flow forth the all-knowingness to bear witness with those around them that, hey, we all know everything anyway. Uh, it's, every, everything's being exposed in these last times. I, I, I think that we're in the last times when all things that are known are coming forth and all things which are intrusions are being burned away. And uh, I think that here we are, beautiful brothers and sisters, beautiful creation, Beautiful ones who are here, magnificent ones, uh, to experience things, you know, within your own inner knowing and to clear the fields, to clear the fields of distortion that have so in, in, in encumbered us, you know. Here we are. We're all knowing. We're, we're flowing with life. We are bearing witness one to the other that, yes, what you say, what I say, what we all say is starting to agree. Here we are, we're all starting to agree with one another and we're, we are exposing the distortions. And we're not going to blame those ones who have uh, infiltrated our fields with deception because we also have been perpetrators of that. So here we are, just uh, deciding within ourselves to cleanse ourselves, purge ourselves and bring forth true knowledge and wisdom and creative ability. Uh, we want to create a better world for ourselves, a better experience. And so what would it be apart from agreement that, hey, we want to create something we want to enjoy rather than something that's uh, disruptive, something that w which is a bit of a suffering or whatever. So uh, I don't know what I can say, you know, facts. You're a beautiful friend of mine. You've invited me on here a few times. Uh, also others in the room. Look, I, I know you're wonderful creatures. How about we all bring forth that which is within ourselves and express it without hindrance without you know, cons you know constraint uh, I would encourage everyone to start bringing forth from within themselves something more magnificent well we are magnificent anyway but something which is relative something which can actually pinpoint a problem and dissolve that problem you know uh, we've got many many archives of history repeating itself through the gateways of our projection into perception of our world of holographic form of experience. We've got many, many uh, streams of distortion which continually repeat themselves into our stage of appearance. Uh, I would like to encourage people to clarify within themselves the source of information which is causing the devastation and which is also causing your experience of elation. You know, what do you want to do? Uh, there are many, many streams of energy coming into the perceptive reality of your holographic experience. I would love people to say to themselves, I want to experience my 
best opportunity. I want to experience those things which are in my best interest and the interests of everyone. I want to experience life and uh, you know, shut down those intruder race line interference patterns that continuously broadcast uh, devastation into your holographic form of experience. I want to see people taking responsibility for the thoughts that enter their mind so they can truly and diligently and certainly produce the life they want to see. Does that make sense? Anyone? I don't know whether I'm speaking <laughs> anything. I mean, I might be waffling on here. I might be rambling. I mean, how did I come to the knowledge of the truth of my true identity? Obviously, I'm still coming to it, but I'm certainly on the pathway of uh, sorting out the wheat from the chaff within my own projector of holographic form of experiential reality. I'm certainly weeding out. I am certainly weeding out the things I don't want to experience, and I certainly am encouraging the things of life that I want to uh, uh, be extending onto the stage of life my experiential reality. I don't know. I don't know what people are going to do about it. I don't know what people are going to do, but uh, I know there is a true source of perpetual motion, life, and creative ability. And I know we have free will to create what we want. And I know that through that freedom of will, we have created things that aren't particularly beneficial to all life everywhere. And that we can say, hey, I don't want to experience that kind of thing. I want to experience joy and peace and love and rightness, whatever. It may be a little bit sort of an, a utopian idea, but I'm sure that the mind can sort out those things which are good for you and those things which you don't want to experience again and to no longer entertain those things which perpetuate the devastation. I'm sure we can use a mechanism of mind that can help us sort out what we want to experience. And uh, I'm sure it's a matter of choice. I'm very, very sure it is a matter of choice. Therefore, what is the mechan mechanation? What is the device within your mind? What is the apparatus? What is the means by which you will sort out the wheat from the chaff within your own identity, self-reality? How will you do it? Well, I think that your original creative flow of life that comes down to you has that answer. You know, it has the answer within it. You want to experience that which is enjoyable. You don't want to experience that which is devastating. Even though devastation is an experience, you can go through, you suffer through it, you don't want to perpetuate it. So therefore, you would eradicate that from your system. Having that wisdom, you might have a device or a means through which you can weed it out, right? You can weed out those things in the garden of your consciousness. You are the gardener. You are the gardener in the field of your dreams. You are the gardener. You are the one who would weed out those things that you don't want to perpetuate and extend through you as a, as a creator. Uh, and your children, being your thoughts, would also have the mechanation or the device or the wonderment of that knowledge to rightly decide or rightly discern which you want to do. And in the end, the more you choose life, the more death will fall away from you, you know? And death only entered in to your program of life because it was entertained in the thoughts of your mind. When you can let life wash death out of your system, so will all of your children or creations, all of the thoughts of your mind, will only contain the goodness of life and there would be no such thing as death within the thoughts of your systems. So therefore, hey, it's up to you. What do you want? What do you want to perpetuate through your thoughts? What do you want to be your creation? Have you got the power of decision to weed out those things that are not beneficial to life? Have you got the power in your mind to weed your garden of consciousness? Because what you think today will extend to another day. And who you share thoughts with will proliferate the thoughts of your mind.
Will you be planting weeds in the garden of another's consciousness? Or will you be weeding your garden and seeding their minds with more pure thoughts? It's a good thought. That's a good thought. Because you are the extender. You are the giver of rivers. You are the one to perpetuate thought. What would you have as a consciousness field of your dreams? Well, we know what it's like, the pristine garden of paradise. We know what it's like. We've heard about it. We came from it. But you've got to walk through the experiences of your own dream to choose what you would have as your reality. So me, as a gardener, I would weed my garden daily. I would weed my garden daily and pull out the things I don't want to seed the fields of others. Just like genetically modified crops today. Genetically modified crops, you know, through Monsanto, for example, are seeding the fields of certain farmers. Now, now certain farmers might have organic crops and they don't want their seeds cross-pollinated with uh, GMO, genetically modified organisms. But because of the wind and the way it blows, their fields are being contaminated. So the contaminators are not very careful about seeding or cross-pollinating distortions into the fields of others. That is causing others to be contaminated. So what would you do? Well, what I would do is I would have a field that cannot be contaminated and I would only send forth cross-pollination from my field that would be beneficial to other fields. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? It makes sense to me because every thought of your mind is broadcast. It is broadcast into the fields of others. Mind communicates with mind. All thoughts are communicating into all minds. Therefore, if people are careless about the thoughts or the, the, the type of seeds that are being planted in their field, they will also have that field rise up crops that will also cross-pollinate with other fields. Now, I'm just saying to myself, if I take responsibility, if I become one to stand up against Monsanto, if I take Monsanto to court, if I prove to the world court that Monsanto is cross-pollinating hybrid destructive seeds into the fields of innocent people, I can have Monsanto shut down. If I stand as one who will not tolerate other seeds being planted in my field of purity, I will eventually perpetuate purity into the fields of others. But if I do not stand up against Monsanto, I will be overrun by all the corruption in this world. Therefore, I take a stand, and I stand in my own sovereign reality only eating and drinking of the source of life so that the only thing I can perpetuate is the true seed of life to share into the fields of others that they will also benefit through the purity that's given through the originality. Does that make sense? Anyway, I'm going to hand over the mic. I hope that makes a little bit of sense. I mean, I was talking it to myself really. Uh, I gave that analogy there because it just came to mind all of a sudden. But I'm sure all of you get the use of the parable, even like Jesus used the parable in the Bible. You know, would the seed fall upon fallow ground, upon good soil, upon rocky places, or amongst thorns and thistles? It's a sort of receptivity of your mind. But it's also a sowing and a reaping. You know, what you're going to sow. Are you going to sow the thoughts of your corrupt mind into the fields of the innocent children of the world? Or are you going to purify your mind and sow the seeds of purity into the fields of the children of this world? Are you going to seed their minds with purity and true principles of life? You know, this whole world is an example of that particular parable. You can see the corruption of the world running rife throughout all of the things here in every aspect of life. You can see it running rife. And yet in the midst of us, there are many, many strong ones who would strengthen their own resolve and only entertain the thoughts of the source code and uh, therefore sow the seeds of true source reality into the minds of the matrix. 
that the Matrix might whisper gently to the corrupted that you can waken and return to truth, you know? So there you go. I hand over the microphone, beautiful ones. I hand over the microphone. Hand over.